Did you know that over 640,000 tonnes of fishing gear is lost or thrown overboard? This lost or abandoned gear, nets, long lines and fish traps entangle marine life. This is called ghost fishing. Fishing gear can get lost accidentally due to bad weather or getting snagged on reefs or other objects. Or it's deliberately discarded because of illegal fishing practices. Sometimes because it's too expensive to properly dispose of. Is this such a big deal? Yes, because fishing gear is typically made of plastic. It's not biodegradable. Plastic never fully degrades, it hangs around in the ocean. And at the moment, roughly 70% of the ocean's microplastic, that's that tiny plastic, are made up of fishing gear. So there's lots of it out there. But because it doesn't degrade, each year we accumulate more and more. Ocean currents and weather events transport this ghost gear from one spot to another. So it's found in all oceans, particularly around the equator. On the northern shores of Australia, over 13,000 ghost nets have been removed over the past nine years. OK, so we know that plastic pollution is not great in the environment, but what's the significance of these ghost nets? Well, they're fishing gear, and that's what they do. They continue fishing. But now no one collects the fish, lobsters and crabs caught in the fishing gear. The trapped marine life effectively rebates the lobster pots as another unsuspecting animal enters the ghost trap. Ghost gear causes significant harm to an ecosystem. Nets dragging along by ocean currents and storms snag on fragile coral and cause damage not only to the coral itself, but as a consequence to the animals that live and rely on the reef habitat. Inquisitive wildlife like whales, dolphins and seals become ensnared. In fact, in Australia's Gulf of Carpentaria alone, Around 10,000 turtles have been entangled in ghost nets, particularly in larger nets. Some of these ghost nets are large enough to entangle an entire whale. Entanglement in fishing gear is increasingly taking a toll on species like the North Atlantic right whale, which is already in trouble. Even if an entangled female is rescued, because she's been dragging ropes and buoys for so long, she's exhausted. This makes it much less likely that she'll reproduce. So a few whales become entangled and this disrupts their breeding. Does that really matter? Unfortunately, at least 50 North Atlantic right whales become entangled each year. And these are just the ones we know about. And there are only 450 North Atlantic right whales left. So that's 11% of the population that becomes entangled every year. The population trends suggest that they may vanish within 20 years. If this happens, they'll be the first great whales to go extinct in modern times. The loss of fish stocks to ghost fishing also impacts the sustainability of our fisheries. Responsible fisheries manage the number of fish they take, balancing their harvest against the known population of the stock. But if the stock is being taken by ghost gear, the fisheries managers won't know, and then the sustainability of that practices could be upturned. There are initiatives to remove ghost gear and rescue endangered wildlife, but we need a solution to reduce or even eliminate ghost fishing. <laughs>